everyone, welcome back to our next video in our color mixing series. Today we are focusing on the color red and we're also touching a little bit on the color pink. So let's jump right in. Okay, so today we are working on the color red and I think I'm also gonna group pink in red with this. So we're gonna be working on pink and red today. Um, I'm just gonna go through my materials again. I am using my Etcher Lab Cold Press Watercolor Sketchbook in the size A4. I have my Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors in this palette. The colors are Dioxazine Purple, Permanent Rose, Turquoise, Ultramarine, Hooker's Green Dark, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, and Cadmium Red Deep. Now, um, in a lot of the sets, I know there was like a set of the Cotman tubes. The red that comes with it is cadmium red, not cadmium red deep. And I just want to quickly show you the difference between the two and why I get cadmium red deep. So let me just swatch cadmium red deep for you first. Okay, it's a pretty nice deep red. Okay. And then here I have cadmium red and I'm going to show you. To me, it just looks orange. Okay, it is a bright orange. So it's a little tricky if you are shopping for a red and you see cadmium red, it's not red, it's like an orange. So that's why I usually go for cadmium red deep. It's really nice and a bright, vibrant red. Okay, so we're talking about mixing reds and pinks today. So again, like our other videos, we are just going to start mixing with other colors to see what kind of reds we get. So. I know I keep saying so, I apologize. There are tons of different colors of reds that we can make. Um, looking here at our color wheel already, so this was our natural red. You, ma you mix it with a secondary color, orange, you get an orange red. Mix it with the purple secondary color, you can get like a purpley red. Um, but let's just start mixing and see what happens. Okay, so a lot of people ask for a nice dark red. Now, if you're looking for kind of a dark, deep, um, kind of like mahogany red, you want to add its contrasting color. Remember, when you add complementary or contrasting colors, you get a shade of brown when you mix them equal parts. But if you wanna darken a color a little bit, just add a slight little bit of its contrasting color. So, in this case, green. So I'm gonna add some Hooker's Green Dark to this to get a darker, deeper red. Now I'm adding a lot here. I'm gonna add more red. And it makes kind of this like burgundy-ish, mahogany kind of green. It's already a bit darker, okay? Which is really nice for like um, winter florals and stuff like that. Or even if you're painting something that's red and you need to draw its like shadow, this is a really good option. Um, another red that I really like mixing is with purple so when we did our purples um, video we did this add a little bit of purple that also makes it a bit darker so you can get this nice kind of like cherry red okay now we know if we mix red and blue we get a purple but what if we mix just a little bit of blue with red okay same kind of deal as mixing it with the purple so if you don't have a purple paint very similar and remember how ever much of each color you use will change that shade right so if you use more red it'll be on more on the red side if you use more purple it'll be more on the purple side okay so there's some dark reds for us um let's mix some red and pink together to get a really nice bright reddish pink. <laughs> it just kind of makes it even more intense of a red. Brightens it up, I love that. Okay, so that's an option. Um, and now we know if we mix red and yellow, we get an orange. So again, there's tons of different levels that you can mix. But if you mix just a little bit, it's gonna be a red-orange. Oops, sorry, that's not red, that's pink. 
mix half and half and you get quite an orange. Now, if we wanted to mix like a coral color, um, you can either add pink or red. I really like to add pink with mine. And you get this really nice coral kind of salmon-y color. That's one of my favorite colors to mix too. And then let's take some of that water off and lighten it up and you get this really nice pastel coral color. Okay, tons of different reds that you can make. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna do a little bit of a red composition. But actually, sorry, let's see how our red color can enhance greens and stuff. So if we're doing like a floral composition with greens, again, remember adding it a little bit of a contrasting color to our greens will kind of neutralize that green. Let's get some sap green here too and make it a little bit more earthy of a tone. Okay, so I'll show you what they both look like with a bit of red. Okay, so we're utilizing that red for different purposes. A little bit more red. So that's more on the brown side. We could add a bit more green. And it looks a little bit more olivey. And then a bit of red on this one. And you get a nice deep kind of brown. We can just make brown with it. Let's add more green. I need to add more paint in this one. And you get a nice deep green. Okay, so let's make, um, yeah, let's make a little red composition. Um, I think I'm gonna show you two different ones. So I'm gonna show you a deeper kind of fall red floral composition using the darker ones. And then we can do one with like the corals and the pinks um, for a summery one. So let's start with this deep cherry kind of red. So we got some of our deep reds over here. I'm gonna add a little bit more purple, a bit more red, like that. And let's do some roses. So I'm just gonna do some squiggly circles with our lots of pigments so it's nice and dark. And then I'm just gonna start applying a bit more pressure and making some C curves around, okay? You can add a bit more color to that too. I'm gonna take some of the color off for the next petals, go around, touching those first petals slightly and just making it nice and light. As we go around. Now I have to be honest, red's not my favorite color to paint with. I don't use it all that often, but there are some really nice ways to use it, especially like Christmas time. I really like using it for florals. And then I'm gonna go back in with some more pigment and just deepen that center. Okay, now let's make another shade of red. Let's make it rustier. So a little bit, let's get our red here. A little bit of that green. Actually, we could just use this green here. Maybe a little bit of yellow. Kind of like a burnt brick red. There we go. And I'll do a different shape of a flower over here. I'm gonna go in with some darker pigment. I'm gonna wipe some of that off to get some contrast, make it lighter. that. Grab a bit more red and then you tap the center. This is a bit more of a fall kind of bouquet. Like that. And then let's add a bit more. I wonder if we add a bit more yellow. It's not too reddish though. We could actually add some berries maybe. Actually, let's add some bright red berries. Make it a bit deeper, add purple. And you just kind of go back and forth and just kind of see what looks best, what you like, what you don't like. Okay, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Like I always say, I don't even really have a plan of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, now let's start adding some of our greens. 
I'm just gonna mix it in with whatever red's over here. And I'm gonna do some bigger leaves. And I really like adding reds to my greens just cause it really neutralizes that green and makes it look a bit more earthy. And then I'm just gonna drag some stems. Do some little leaves coming off like that. Okay. A little bit more. So there's one green. Let's add some sap green to this. Get a brighter green going. Maybe we can do a little bit of pine actually. So I'm gonna grab my smaller brush. Oh, I forgot to tell you the brushes I was using like I usually do. I'm using my Princeton Snap brushes and that was a size 12 round. This is a size six. And I'm gonna do some pine. So this is more, I said fall, but I'm gonna say winter now. <laughs> like a Christmassy red composition. It's pretty. Some long pine needles. Like that. You can always darken it up with a bit more red. Okay. And then we can just add some red to and we get a brown center. Maybe for this. Like that. And there you go. There's like a wintry one. Um, I'm going to turn this around and we can do some more summery reds. So let's do more corals and pinks actually. So when I think like a pink corally color, I'm using permanent rose here and some red, a little bit of yellow. I think of a peony. So I'm going to do kind of like an open peony. I'm just going to do some fluffy petals, bring it down a bit, like this, have some fluffy petals kind of falling, this one's quite open, this peony. And as you see, I'm changing up the contrast, so I have some really dark petals, I have some really light petals, and I just like the way that looks, I think it adds, it's more interesting to look at when you have that contrast. really fluffy. Add a bit more pink and red here and just tap it in there. Get some nice dark petals going like that. Then I'm going to take my sap green and mix it with a little bit of that red to get that nice kind of olivey color. I'm going to do some leaves. that. Okay. And maybe I'll do like another little like rose or something down here. So let's use that red and orange and yellow. I can speak, I promise. And I'm going to lighten it up and I'm going to do another little kind of bud down here. So it's a bit more on the orange side, add a little bit of pink. And get nice like a salmon color like that okay like that 
Let's get some little red buds in there too. Let's just mix some red. Some bright red little buds in here. For a nice bright summery bouquet. And for summery bouquets, I like to add um, or use sap green more often. And then for the winter and fall, I like to use the hooker's green dark. Let's add some little leaves coming from these little buds. Like that. Can add a few bits more of greenery just to balance it out like that grab a little bit of yellow for that center of the peony like that cute and then we can just do some more long leaves if you want just using the shape of that brush to Drag out some longer leaves. Again, mixing it with some red to get more of an earthy tone. Like that. Okay, so there's so many ways that you can use red. Like I said, it's not my absolute favorite color. If you know the color theory behind cyan, magenta, and yellow, the actual primary colors, um, then you'll know that you can actually make red. Red isn't actually a primary color. It's made up of magenta and yellow. In this case, in this palette, we do not have a magenta and we have a red, but if you wanted to narrow your paints down to even less colors, you could buy a magenta and a yellow and then pick a blue. Um, we don't have it in here. I do have it in my professional palette. So I'm just gonna show you how to actually make red. So here I have magenta. I'm just gonna swatch it for you right here. Okay, it's nice and a bright, deep pink. Okay, and then I'm going to throw it in my palette here. And then you just add, not half yellow, but a bit of yellow. So there should be a bit more magenta than there is yellow and you'll get red okay you can even add a bit more yellow like that okay and so you can actually make your own red if you don't want to buy red so other colors that are great to have are magenta um, yellow and then you can pick a blue prussian blue is good um i like ultramarine but yeah, so that's another way that you could narrow your paints down to even less colors and just do the three primary colors. And there you go. So that's how you make red and that's how you make tons of other reds. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day guys, bye.